directors consists of Tucker Thompson as vice president, Harlan Grunden, treasurer, secretary is currently open, Acklin Smolik, Rocky Sailors, and Rich Bringleson. And our advisory board consists of Alicia Harden and TJ Walker from the Game Parks, Nadine Bishop from the NRCS, Tim Buskirk, Forest Service and Shadron, uh, Chad Blado, the Nature Conservancy, Ed Hubbs, the Audubon, Michelle Foss, Fontenelle Forest, Shelley Kelly from the Sand Hills Task Force, John Ortman and Dr. Drack Twidwell from the University of Nebraska, who our thoughts and prayers are with him and his family. Brian Teeter from Pheasants Forever, uh, for the, he is the prescribed burn coordinator, uh, who needs a special thank you for all the hard work he does for the prescribed fire in this conference. This year, we had two landowner board members step down. I would like to also thank them for all they have done over the years for the NPFC, Sue Kirkpatrick from Lincoln and Secretary Roger Hankey from St. Paul. The NPFC was formed so that landowners could have a voice moving forward about how to manage their land with fire on state and regional level issues. We as landowners have a responsibility to our livelihood and future generations to purposefully advance our industry. NPSC is always striving for growth within our organization. So if you feel that you're interested in becoming a board member for the NPSC, feel free to contact one of us for more information or otherwise visit uh, nefirecouncil.org or on Facebook, Nebraska Prescribed Fire Council. Thank you all for attending this year's conference. I will be glad to see you all in 2021 to our regional conference in North Pine. Have a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, like Scott said, uh, welcome to the conference. Uh, we're gonna kind of get right into it. Um, our next speaker's got a meeting with the governor here pretty soon, so we're gonna get him in. Um, we got Christopher Cantrell. Um, he served our, uh, served our country in the United States Navy from 1992 to 1998, uh, working on nuclear propulsion plants. Um, he, prior to state service, uh, worked in the insurance company inspecting power plants and conventional and nuclear from 90, 1998 to 2007. He is the state boiler inspector from 2007 to currently. Uh, he was the DOL safety director from July 2014 to 2018. And now he's currently the uh, state fire marshal uh, since 2018. Uh, safety is his professional passion, followed closely by efficiency and customer service. Uh, Christopher is going to be talking a little bit about uh, the future of burn permits and potentially electronic burn permits in the future. So Christopher, you wanna go ahead and take it away? Yep. Thank you, Brian. And thanks Alicia and Scott for, uh, Alicia for the invite and Scott for all you do for uh, burning and land management in the state of Nebraska. I do appreciate the opportunity to speak today. Um, as was mentioned before, <clears throat> this has been a unique year, uh, two unique years really, um, you know, flooding one year followed by a pandemic the next. Uh, I've already told the governor I'm taking next March off um, because the first two have not been that great in, in sitting on his cabinet. But uh, one of the things that COVID did for us uh, as a group and us here at uh, State Fire Marshal was it allowed us to begin to think out of the box and, and begin to use uh, an electronic burn permit. It's by no means an app, it's by no means uh, perfected, but we do have one that's in use. And we took the information off of our current triplicate form that we hand out at fire school every year and we made that into uh, basically a fillable PDF. Now, it might be it might be a word document, but I, I certainly hope not. I don't think it is. But uh, you know, we have a lot of people who are concerned about the use of electronic burn permits. Uh, primarily, um, you know, we're not in the business at the state fire marshal ag agency of everything being rosy and fine all the time. You know, we're we're an enforcement and regulatory agency, uh, so we're specifically uh, around to plan for worst case scenarios. So when we begin looking at new processes like this electronic burn permit, um, you know, we have a, a, a ton of devil's advocates, you know, the what ifs questions that come up. And, you know, our fire investigator, our investigations team and Chief Adam Matzner uh, was concerned that how would he be able to go and, you know, cause I, I'm sure you guys know, or this group knows 
that every time you burn, there's going to be a complaint that's filed, right? Regardless of how well you plan it or how well you advertise it and, and talk with your neighbors or talk with the community, just about every time uh, there is burning going on, we get a complaint. So our investigators uh, investigate those complaints. And so our concern was how do we verify that this person who is conducting the burning has an actual burn permit? And so we built in some safeguards for that, that the uh, person conducting the burning or the entity conducting the burning would have to have a copy of the email. There has to be a few more email verifications back and forth. Uh, but so far, we've received pretty good feedback on uh, the use of that. And so we're considering uh, allowing that to go forward. Now, one of our challenges as a state agency is that we are bound by statutes and regulations on what we can and can't do. And you know, I've talked with Alicia about this. Our current statute, which is the law, uh, requires the state fire marshal to issue forms uh, to the fire chiefs for the fire chiefs to then use for our burn permitting. Uh, we had made an attempt this year to, to change that law uh, to allow burn permits to be issued, uh, to change that from on a form provided by the state fire marshal to in a format approved by the state fire marshal. That did not go through this year. So um, we're still very open to using electronic burn permits. What I think will have to happen is that your group and similar groups will have to come up with Here's, here's what we would like to do, and here's the type of form and the type of approvals that we would like to use and present that to us, and then we can begin the discussion that way. For anyone who hasn't seen our electronic burn permit, I'll do my best after my meetings today uh, to get a copy of that to Alicia. Uh, Alicia, have you seen that burn permit, that electronic permit? I know that I have. I know Brian has. Okay. And Brian, you, you have? Yeah, I got a copy that I can send to people. Okay. Yeah, that would be that would be great. And as far as I know, we haven't had any issues with it. And so that would be a form that's provided by the state fire marshal. We developed that in house, but uh, I can tell you, I'm also very open to looking at other methods, uh, better methods, um, to do that. Uh, do you have any participation in this meeting? Alicia or Scott or Brian from Volunteer Fire or any fire chiefs on this meeting? Yes, there was a few fire departments that have been in here and quite a few firefighters I have recognized too. Right. So that's, I mean, those are key players, right? We, we issue the form, but all of the approvals and all of the regulations. So we're, we're involved at the very front end to, to help create the form or to provide that form. And at the back end, to say, okay, we're gonna write people up now and we're gonna issue fines uh, if something goes wrong, right? If someone's burning outside the requirements of the permit. So those fire chiefs, uh, the, the volunteer fire council, the, uh, the municipal fire chiefs are the ones that should be reached out to as well to begin developing that, uh, any type of burn permit process, electronic burn permit process, because then they're the ones who are gonna be using it and signing off on it and, and really be responsible for uh, the prescribed fires that are going on in their districts. But right now, what I can tell you is I'm very open uh, to anything that makes, uh, that increases the efficiency, um, that increases that availability, but still provides us with that level of um, security that we need so it's not a forgeable document. So we, we know when we go out and we ask someone for a copy of their permit, they can show us their phone or a tablet or have a printed out copy of it with them. And we, and we can be assured that that is a true uh, and legal document. So uh, again, very open. This is not a policy discussion. This is just me saying that I'm open to it. And if your organization or other organizations want to present things to me, I'm very much open uh, to, to modernizing our system. Perfect. Yeah, I think it's important to note that, uh, you know, we're not trying to, you know, do a standard statewide. You know, we still want control left to individual fire districts. 
um, you know, and leave it up to them whether, you know, they wanted to use electronic format or remain um, using the standard format, the triple click copies. Um, we're not right. um, trying to, you know, give state level control to fire that, that still needs to be at the local level. We do That's have um, one chat, Chris, that somebody was saying it would be nice to have a GIS map system that we can post planned burns. Um, so just that, that geo-referenced kind of at, uh, piece of, of a burn permit would be nice is what I think we're trying to say here too. Money, money, money. I know. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think uh... Uh, NEMA is big into GIS and they have an interest in this. I'm not sure if our state forester is on or any, if we have any representatives from forester, I'm not sure if they have that availability, but uh, you know, anything you can, anything we can do as a state and as uh, individual fire districts and, and you as a council to make uh, reporting and tracking more accurate. I think I'd be supportive of that too. Problem with GIS is that it's typically not landowner or volunteer fire department friendly. Um, depends on how the system is based or set up. But, but yeah, it would be you know in the future. You know, I think currently my goal would be just to have a really easy system where you know I could get a burn permit just by sending an email or a quick text to my fire chief, and we can fill it out and email back and have an electronic copy without without basically having to run track track down the fire chief. Um, you know, at work or bother them during the holidays or whatever. So, well, we've all seen the manila folders in the foyer of the fire halls, right? That uh, have those fill it out here and drop it in this other one, and uh, and we'll see when you get it back, right? So, anything I think that can make it easier, uh, more efficient, uh, and is and is auditable and enforceable, I think I'd be in favor of. So, uh, just bounce stuff off me. I'm I'm more than willing to help out, and I really do have to run. So, thanks again. Perfect. Everyone, I'll try and check in a little bit later, Alicia, uh, if you'd like me to. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks a lot, Chris. We appreciate you taking time out of your. All right. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Yep. Bye bye. Thanks, Chris. So that's good. I think, you know, we're heading in the right direction there for some electronic burn permitting. Um, I know it helped out this spring with the pandemic. A lot of uh, fire departments were using them. Uh, some fire departments are still using the triple E copies, but. Overall, I think that's a it's a good sign of progress that the state fire marshal and the states uh, and the volunteer fire departments are are willing to listen to that to kind of make things a little easier. So, all right, we're going to move on here. Um, so yesterday, 